Hey there, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into one of the most ambitious and sci-fi sounding ideas out there, terraforming Mars. Now before you start picturing giant domes with humans sipping margaritas on a red sandy beach, let's get real. While it sounds like something straight out of a sci-fi movie, terraforming Mars is actually a topic scientists are seriously considering. But what does it really take to make Mars livable? And maybe more importantly, what could go wrong? Let's find out. First off, let's break down what we mean by terraforming. Simply put, it's the process of altering a planet's environment to make it more Earth-like. This means changing the atmosphere, temperature, surface, and other conditions so humans could, in theory, live there. So we're talking about transforming Mars from a cold, dry wasteland into a new home for humanity, not a small task. Mars, as we know, is basically the ultimate survival challenge. It's super cold. Average temperature, 80 degree fur, has an atmosphere that's 100 times thinner than Earth's, and it's about as dry as a desert, only worse. But hey, if we can land a rover on it, surely we can turn it into a tropical paradise, right? Spoiler, it's way more complicated than that. So, the first thing we've got to do is heat Mars up. Oops, sorry about that. Huh. Anyway, Mars is freezing cold. And without a warm, breathable atmosphere, there's no way we'll be walking around in shorts and flip-flops. The average temperature on Mars is around minus 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which is basically the temperature you'd find in Antarctica, but without penguins, so it's not as cute. There are a few ideas scientists have to warm the place up. One of the most popular methods is called the greenhouse effect. Essentially, this would involve pumping gases like CO2, carbon dioxide, into the atmosphere to trap more heat. Now Mars actually has a lot of CO2 locked away in its polar ice caps. So if we could somehow release that gas into the air, we might be able to get things nice and toasty. Kind of like turning on a space heater, but for an entire planet. Imagine that, being able to finally tell your friends, yeah, Mars is looking way better this time of year. Of course, this isn't exactly easy. It would require massive energy and technology we don't yet have, but it's one possible step toward making Mars habitable. Plus, if it works, we'd have global warming in space, which is the kind of irony I'm sure no one saw coming. Okay, so now we've heated Mars up a little, but it's not enough to just crank up the thermostat. Mars has an atmosphere that's super thin and mostly made of carbon dioxide. Translation, it's not exactly ideal for breathing. In fact, you'd need a spacesuit to survive just outside of your Mars dome. To make Mars breathable, we'd need to add oxygen to the atmosphere. A few possible ways to do this. Photosynthetic bacteria or algae. These little guys use sunlight to convert carbon dioxide into oxygen. So by dumping a ton of these organisms onto Mars, we could theoretically start converting its atmosphere into something that doesn't kill us. It's like trying to breathe life into a planet that's been holding its breath for millions of years. Electrolysis of water. Water on Mars mostly exists in the form of ice. If we could melt this ice and break the water molecules apart using electricity, called electrolysis, we could separate the hydrogen from the oxygen and boom, we get oxygen. Now, if you're thinking, wait, aren't we just going to run out of water super fast? You're not wrong. But hey, maybe future humans will just get really good at making lemonade out of frozen rocks. Or, you know, we could use the same method to create hydrogen fuel to power everything we need. So it's a win-win if we don't burn the planet to a crisp in the process. Water, water everywhere except on Mars. While Earth has oceans full of liquid water, Mars has barely any. What little water Mars has is trapped in the polar ice caps or frozen in the soil. So how do we get water to the surface? There are a couple of ideas to get the water flowing on Mars. Melt the polar ice caps. One idea is to use solar mirrors to focus sunlight onto the polar ice caps, causing them to melt and release water vapor into the atmosphere. That's basically like using a magnifying glass to start a fire. But you know, on a planetary scale, use Mars's subsurface water. Mars has evidence of ancient riverbeds, which means it's possible there's liquid water below the surface. If we could drill deep enough, we might be able to tap into underground water reserves. Hey, maybe we can strike gold and water at the same time. But let's be real. If we're going to turn Mars into Earth 2.0, we'll need a lot of water. 
And by a lot, I mean a ton. We're talking oceans, lakes, rivers, the whole shebang. And we've only got a small part of the water we need. So we'll need some serious ingenuity to make it happen. One of the things that makes Earth so special is its magnetic field, which protects us from harmful radiation from the sun. Unfortunately, Mars doesn't have a strong magnetic field, meaning it's pretty much getting blasted by cosmic radiation all the time. Without that protection, any life on Mars would be exposed to radiation levels that could cause severe health problems. So how do we fix this? One idea is to create an artificial magnetic field around Mars. No big deal, right? Just throw up a giant magnet in space and call it a day. Okay, maybe not that simple. Some scientists have suggested placing a giant magnetic shield at the L1 Lagrange point, a spot between Mars and the Sun, where it could deflect harmful solar radiation away from the planet. Alternatively, we could start by building protective habitats. Think of those Mars domes, but with thick shielding to protect from radiation. Basically, a space-age version of your childhood blanket fort, but with less glitter and more advanced materials. We've got a warm atmosphere, breathable air, and water. So now, let's think about plant life. After all, what's a good habitable planet without trees, plants, and grass to give it that earthy vibe? The trick here is that plants need a few things to grow. Sunlight, water, and of course, the right nutrients. Luckily, Mars gets plenty of sunlight, though it's weaker than Earth's. And if we're successful in creating a stable atmosphere and water sources, plants could eventually thrive. But we'd probably have to start with hardy, genetically modified plants that could withstand the harsh conditions of Mars. So imagine rolling into Mars and seeing the first green leaves sprout in centuries. It'd be like that first day of spring, except, you know, on an entirely new planet. And let's be real, the first Martian flower might even become the world's most famous selfie subject. Now don't get too excited just yet. Terraforming Mars sounds great, but it's incredibly difficult. The planet's thin atmosphere, lack of water, and harsh temperatures mean we'd need immense amounts of energy, resources, and time, likely centuries or more. Plus, we'd have to deal with logistical nightmares, like transporting materials to Mars or maintaining the technology over time. It's kind of like building a house, but the house is an entire planet, and you're also doing it 140 million miles away. So, could we terraform Mars? Maybe, someday, after a lot of work, a lot of resources, and probably a few space disasters. It's one of the most ambitious ideas humanity has ever come up with. And while the science is fascinating, we still have a long way to go before Mars becomes Earth 2.0. But hey, at least it's fun to dream about, right? Maybe in a couple of hundred years, we'll be sipping coffee on the Martian surface, looking up at Earth and saying, remember when we used to live there? Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, Hit that like button, subscribe, and leave a comment with your thoughts on terraforming Mars. Do you think it's possible, or should we just leave Mars to the robots?